Hey guys, for my June 1st DVD update, I want to talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last two weeks or so. Like I always say, thanks again for all the support on these videos, giving you know the videos thumbs up, leaving comments below, trying to get back to all the comments, but definitely giving any suggestions below this video for future films to check out and the updates and your opinions of the films that I've talked about in this update. Now the first one from XL Radiator Media, this is a really pretty cool one called Dead Mine. It's about a kind of a search group that's kind of, you know, it kind of reminds me of movies like Congo and Predator and all those, all those kind of movies where it's like a group of people trying to find something or track something down. A lot like Congo and those kind of search movies. Not at all like what happens, but those kind of vibes. But it's about a guy who's there with his girlfriend and they're kind of, they don't really tell the people that are with them like the, you know, the... I guess they're kind of in the army or something like that. They're kind of soldiers, and they're not really telling them what they're looking for. But the you know the main guy who's head of the group, you know, he knows what they're looking for, and he's trying to find this cave where he believes that there's old treasure from the Japanese that like kind of stored it away in there. And I don't know exactly know why he thinks it's there, but for some reason he believes it's there. So they're all get, you know go there try and find it. Right when they get to where the cave is, there you know there's all these people out there shooting at them. You don't know what it is. Like it also has that vibe of like the descent you know they end up having to go and hide in this cave before they actually had time to look at it and figure out if it's safe to actually go in and you know get the you know layout of it and things like that so they end up going in there and the people who are out there shooting at them end up blowing the cave up outside they end up trapped and have to try and find a way out and inside of this thing is, are these kind of, like the Descent, these kind of weird kind of creature kind of things. You don't really know what they are, and they have these metal things on their mouths, and it's very creepy. Kind of mix of, like, also, like, things like Hills Have Eyes, and it has all kinds of vibes of all these other movies. But I just thought it was really a creepy, kind of different movie when they get into the cave with what's going on, and involves all kinds of experiments and radiation and all kinds of weird stuff. Really, really thought this one that I really like this a lot. I definitely recommend checking this one out. was really impressed with this. And the next one I got from Warner Brothers is the brand new Mad Max Trilogy Blu-ray set in this really cool tin. And, you know, if you open the tin up like this, I'll show you what it looks like. So, like, looks, here's the back. And inside is the movie's in a Blu-ray case. Um, now, the tin, there's, like, hasn't, I didn't, can't remember the last time that I saw a movie, like, in a tin like this, which is really pretty cool. I always like these kind of sets. Anchor Bay used to make ones, they were a little bit bigger, like, kind of, to almost bulky, and they were of uh, Hellraiser, and this was, like, in the early days of DVDs. They also did, um, I know Hellraiser and some, I think Evil Dead 2. Now, uh, this one, though, Mad Max and The Road Warrior have been on Blu-ray before. Road Warrior has been out of print for a long time, and Beyond Thunderdome has never been released on Blu-ray before. And if you haven't seen the films, there are Australian films that are, you know, set in a post-apocalyptic future that star Mel Gibson. And they they were actually, uh, Mad Max was like one of his earliest, I don't know if it was his first, well, I know one of his earliest films, and they all involve the shortage of gas and Mel Gibson trying to defend it. The second one involves him in this kind of community. And when you kind of look at it, uh, movies like Waterworld, especially Waterworld, kind of got vibes, you know, with their kind of like, in the movie Waterworld, he goes in this kind of big community out in the middle of the ocean with people kind of living in it. And Road Warrior has the same type of thing. So, man... Uh, Waterworld kind of got a lot of its looks and like kind of like the whole vibe, a lot of the story of the people trying to want to get into it and things like that from that movie. The second one involves uh, Tina Turner in this kind of, when they kind of fight to the death in this kind of ball of like doom thing, which is called the Thunderdome. And if you look at like Land of the Dead and things like some of these, there's just a lot of movies that kind of copied the fight to the death things. These are the kind of movies that really inspired, like when you think of the futuristic look and like the end of the world and the clothes, all that kind of stuff, so many movies have borrowed from these looks. What's interesting about the Mad Max when it was first released, some versions of the movie dubbed over Mel Gibson, Gibson's Australian accent with, I think, I don't even think it was him, just some random American voice, because at the time, he wasn't, you know, well-known, so they did it, and I uh, I don't know why they did it at the time, it was an interesting thing that they did, but these are really fun, you know, futuristic movies, I've always really liked them, they all, they all look great on Blu-ray. Uh, the first one has a commentary with, um, 
John Dowling and like you know some of the actors in the film, a making of featurette, and the second one has a commentary with George Miller, uh, an introduction by Leonard Moulton, and like I said, the Beyond the Unknown has never been released on Blu-ray before, but these are definitely ones if you like futuristic films like the end of the world kind of things. This is definitely ones which I would highly suggest. Always have absolutely loved these. Like I said, though, my personal favorites have been Rover and Beyond Thunderdome. And I thought Tina Turner did a really good job. And I was sort of surprised that she never really went on and did more movies. Because she played a really good part in this. But these are the ones I would definitely recommend picking up. Now, the next one from Anchor Bay is Quartet. And this is a really, you know, one of those real positive, you know, movies. I really like these kind of movies. And it stars Maggie Smith, Tom Courtney, Billy Connolly, um, Pauline Collins, and Michael Gamboon. Hopefully I'm saying the names right. But the people that I know the most in this movie are Billy Connolly and Maggie Smith. And, you know, every time I think of Maggie Smith, I always think of The Secret Garden. I always thought she was good in that movie. That was a, you know, but she's been in lots of really good stuff. Titanic, all kinds of stuff. But that is one that I always think of. This is a movie about a old age retirement home. It's all from musicians that kind of, they kind of are just sort of there and kind of out of the limelight and they're not really doing much, but they kind of put on, um, every, I think it's once a year they put on this play or this show to kind of raise money to keep the, you know, retirement community going. And that's kind of what, you know, because this place is really low on funds and they really need to have this show be a success this year. And it's four people who were all in this group together years Years ago, Maggie Smith, though, she ends up coming to this retirement center not knowing, I, I believe she knows that all the people are there, but she doesn't want anything to do with the singing. She doesn't want anything to do with this. And she was um, had a brief marriage to one of the people who was in the group. So it's one of those kind of movies about them, you know, people who haven't spoken to each other in years and, you know, trying to patch up old problems and things like that. And if those of you who are thinking like it might be like Sister Act 2 where it's a movie where it all it is is singing and it's like practicing, it's not that at all. It's not that kind of a movie. It's more about relationships and old friends and kind of like the pain of getting old and trying to, you know, accept your past and move forward from it. And like, it's, it's one of those kind of movies, but very well acted. Just a really fun, positive movie that I really thought it was... A, just one I would recommend really checking out. The next one from New Video, and this is the kid, I never, I've never, actually never watched the show Glee, but I believe he's the star of Glee, and he actually wrote this, and I actually think after, you know, from his writing that he's going to definitely be writing a bunch of movies, because I thought he did a really good job with the, with the story in this, and it's struck by lightning, and it stars him, and, um, the other person who's known from this is Rebel Wilson. And the mom, I forget what her name, I think it's Allison Janney. She's been in a whole bunch of stuff. But the movie starts with him, and he's like in high school, and he writes for the high school newspaper. And all the people that he's, well, basically it opens, though, with him getting struck by lightning, and he dies. And it's one of those kind of movies where he's kind of telling the, you know, the story of the weeks or months up until his death. So you know going into this that he gets struck by lightning, it's the end of him. So so he's kind of, you know, talking about what led to this happening and all the situations that happened before. But he writes for the high school newspaper and everybody else that's with him besides Rebel Wilson's character doesn't really have any interest in it. They don't, you know, submit their articles in time. They don't care. They're just sort of there because they need the credit and need the, you know, after school activity kind of credit kind of thing. But, you know, I, I thought it was a really pretty cool movie, though. It's him kind of trying to put together this literary magazine that, you know, because he wants to get into this really specific, sto you know, school. He wants to get away from where he lives. You know, he has, his mother is kind of an alcoholic and abusing pills, and he can't, he just wants to get away, and he's counting on getting a scholarship to the school that he really wants to go to. So, you know, the he basically comes up with this literary magazine thing and it's him kind of trying to get people to be involved and involving blackmailing and all these kind of dirt that he has on the students and all that kind of stuff. But Rebel Wilson, this was very funny. She's a little old though to be playing a high school student. It kind of, you could kind of tell, you know, she doesn't really look like a high school student, but it didn't really matter though. But I don't know. I thought this was a kind of a, like a quirky, kind of weird, kind of a vibe 
uh, with the writing and kind of like election, that kind of a vibe movie. Would definitely recommend checking this one out. And the next one you saw me pick up when I was at Fry's, haven't gotten a look at the picture on it yet, and it's Vegas Vacation. I don't know, it's one of the National Lampoon's ones. I know a lot of people don't absolutely love this one. You know, I've always been a fan, like I like going to Vegas, so not a huge fan of like using lots of money gambling. Just kind of being there is always kind of fun. There's some cool movie stores and stuff there that I found when I went with, you know, Wet Marie 1 there. But this is kind of the Griswolds going to Vegas for a trip and kind of all the situations that they run into. And, you know, Uncle Cousin Eddie's out there and, you know, he kind of lives where they do nuclear testing. And I always thought it was kind of funny. It's, it is the more kind of PG National Lampoon's movie. It's one of the only ones that was rated PG. So you can kind of tell... It was kind of made to be more of like a kid's one compared to some of the other ones. But it is a very, to me, a funny one. And the next one, you saw me pick up both of these when I was at Fry's. And the first one is Airheads. Um, and, you know, if you haven't seen Airheads, it's about a guys who are in a band. And, you know, they're kind of watching people around them that they kind of know. Or, you know, all these other kind of crappy bands. Getting contact, contracts, record contracts, and things like this. This was, this was all kind of when record contracts and all this kind of stuff was a lot bigger than it is now, because nowadays this movie wouldn't work as good because it's so much now of people can go on YouTube and make a video, and people can put their music on iTunes, and it's much easier to get things seen than it was back then. You kind of relied on the radio and things like that. So it's got a little bit of a, you know, it kind of dates it a little bit to the time, but it is such a, like a fun movie to me. But it's, you know, stars Brendan Fraser, and it's Adam Sandler's the star of it, Steve Buscemi. It's kind of one of the Adam Sandler movies that people don't talk about much. But it's him, you know, they all kind of go to this radio station to try and get their record, their song played, but they end up holding up the place because they won't play it. So it's them, all the stuff with the cops and demands. It's just a really fun one. Chris Farley plays a cop in this. And, you know, he was always great in everything. And Bedazzled was... A remake, I think it was a Dudley Moore movie I was seeing, I think it was. I've never seen the original, need to watch it though. But it's Brendan Fraser's this kind of guy who, not, his friends don't really, he doesn't really have any friends, no one really likes him. So the devil, played by Liz Hurley, Elizabeth Hurley, comes and gives him seven wishes where he can basically be, you know, have these other lives. And he tries to get with this girl each time that he likes. And it's one when he's like a basketball player and a, all these different things. The only pain is this doesn't have the features, so I have to keep the old DVD, because the DVD had one segment when he was, like, a rock star. I forget where that one exactly fit in, though, in the movie, but it was one of those, like, hidden features on it. But this was just a fun, you know, if you like Brendan Fraser, too, this I always just thought it was a fun movie. The next one from um, Magnolia is called This Girl is Badass. Yeah, This Girl is Badass. It was kind of... You know, like that one movie with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, you know, because uh, it's the only other movie I can think of that was about a bike, bike messenger that, like, made deliveries. It's not, the movie's nothing like that, but it was like a bike messenger, this girl who delivers things for kind of like this crime lord guy. And um, the guy, like, I, I thought it was kind of funny because I watched the dub one and I looked at the um, the original language version and still the crime lord in both of them had this voice like, well, I think you should go over there. Because the movie's kind of like a parody, kind of over-the-top parody. And I was reading that there's apparently two versions of this movie, and one of them, I guess, is a more serious version, and one of them has, like, comedic-type sound effects or something like that. To me, I thought that was the stuff I really liked the best in it, was those kind of over-the-top things when she's dealing with these crime lords and things like that. And she ends up delivering one package, and these people end up wanting to get it back. And it's like them coming after and saying, you've got all these days to get it back. And, you know, her uncle... You know, she's helping out her uncle and things like that. And there's also some cool stuff, you know, showing this kind of like DVD kind of store that the uncle works at where it's like they have those VCDs. It kind of reminds me of um, that that one kind of, I can't even remember what the name of the movie was. But it was like a zombie movie. I think it was in China, Japan. I can never remember which one it was in. But it was like a zombie movie in like a mall. And it kind of, like the mall thing they filmed, it kind of looked a little like that. But this is just a really fun kind of movie with her kind of kicking ass and all these people after her and things like that. I, I like this one quite a bit. The next one, I got this one at Walmart. This is one you saw in the last shopping video. And if any of you guys have not seen those ones, I'm sorry I'm doing a series for the last probably month and a half or so of me on Tuesdays going out, you know, going DVD and Blu-ray shopping and things like that. 
Now this one I got, this is a show that I watched as a child, like continuously. I had all the toys from the show, you know, I had the VHS tapes of this, and I'm probably going to buy them the this, this season separately. I might down the line, if it ever goes down in price, get the whole set, but it's Beetlejuice Season 1. This is just such a fun, you know, spin-off from the Beetlejuice movie, and like, like I said, this is one that I watched, like, continuously as a child. Like, it was one of one of the top watch things up there with Pee Wee's Playhouse and, you know, some of the other ones as a child, like Popples and some of those kind of things. And this, I had no idea that this was out, and someone showed it to me, and it's not Burn on Demand disc. It's actually, you know, professionally produced discs. And it's David the Gnome, the complete collection. And it wasn't that expensive. I think it was like $13 or something. And it's all 26 episodes. And, you know, people who have seen this, they'll know. You know, the last episode, you know, if you don't want to have, like, a depressing day, you might not want to watch it. Because uh, I don't, I've never, I talked about this in one of my Q&As, I've never seen a show end, like a children's show, end so depressing. You know, because of what happens and things like that. I can't, I cannot think of anything else that did a thing like this. But this is just a really fun show I watched as a kid. Really have always liked it. Tom Bosley did the voice of David the Gnome. I don't know, it's just, it's just a really, really fun show. The next one from um, MTI, and this one was it was one of those kind of movies. I wasn't sure if it was almost like a lifetime movie. I don't think it was because it didn't. It kind of was a little bit more, you know, a little. It didn't seem like them exactly. And it's called Stalked, Stalked at Seventeen. It's this guy, you know, who's like these two girls are looking at a college with their parents, and they're kind of you know looking at the visitation. They end up meeting this guy. And, like, he's an older guy, he's, like, 21, and he ends up, you know, going out with the one girl who's 16, it's, you know, it's not a good thing, and he ends up getting her pregnant, and this guy is, like, a nutcase, and when she finds out that he's pregnant, I mean, when, when, he, when he finds out that she's pregnant, he ends up becoming obsessed with it, going, oh, I'm going to get us an apartment, and I'm going to take care of this baby, and we're going to have a true life together, and I'm going to support you, and... You know, you're gonna. I'm gonna send you to college, and when the parents find out about it, it's a huge nightmare. And it's all about though this guy just being like a stalker. And the guy, I thought the guy did a really good job. He, I think he was in the new American Pie movie, but it's one of those kind of things. Like I was really surprised with like how crazy it was. And the one guy's mother is so awful. Like she's like, yeah, that woman, the way she was acting and stuff. I don't know, it's like, it, it really felt realistic, some of it. Like, kind of like, jeez. I don't know, I, I liked it, though. And the next one from um, Inception Media is The Unbroken. And this is about a woman who moves into a new apartment complex, and when she's driving in, she sees this kid stand there, and she looks like, then, like, she drives, like, she almost ran him over. And she looks down, he's gone. She sees this kind of creepy clown doll on the ground with a hair cut off, and... And, like, then she, like, goes inside and, it's like, she's trying to, like, figure out where it happened to him and, like, did he run off? It, you know, she thinks at first that she killed him. She ends up talking to her neighbor, neighbor played by Daniel Baldwin, who actually, I thought, did a pretty good job. And it was actually, you know, pulled off his part in this, I thought, really good. And, you know, Warwick Davis is in this in a small part. And um, I always liked Warwick Davis, especially in Idiot Abroad season, you know, the last season of that show. Which I know they're not going to do anymore, but I would love to see, like, a movie of that show. But Warwick Davis kind of plays like the psychic guy who knows all about holistics and all this kind of stuff about ghosts. But the woman ends up, you know, seeing this kid everywhere. When she asks Daniel Baldwin's character about it, he's all like, oh, I don't talk about it. And, like, everyone at this place is all kind of weirded out by it. And she keeps on seeing it. And then, like, she ends up, you know, meeting this guy who's, like, lives at the apartment complex. And they're kind of helping, trying to figure out what's going on and figure out what's, why she keeps seeing this kid and investigating it. I don't know. I thought the movie was pretty good. But it's one of those kind of things, though, where the kid wasn't very creepy. It kind of looked a little bit... I don't know. There wasn't... I think there should have been some more, like, tinting to the video with the kid or something. He just looked at some points. Some points he looked a little bit scary. Or other points he looked just kind of like a little, just like a kid, and there wasn't much to him. That was the only thing with it, the kind of... But, like I said, though, Daniel Baldwin really pulled off what he did in it. I don't know, I just... I, I liked it. It's one of those movies where it's not a perfect movie, but for what it was, I liked it. This one, on the other hand, I don't know what to say about this one. I, I don't know. It's one of those ones where you kind of get lost for words with it. 
Uh, and it's called The Locker. It's from um, E1. And it was one of the ones when I kind of heard about it, I was kind of excited about it and kind of had high hopes for it. Because I, at first I kind of thought when I saw the title it might be like a storage locker. You know, because I always liked those movies like Storage 23, I think, or whatever that one was with the alien. And I don't know, I always liked those storage things. Um, murder Party was another Murder Game. Yeah, Murder Game was another one in Storage Center. Um, but this one's about like this girl that ends up getting kidnapped and she gets put into kind of like this kind of like locked up room, almost like a saw kind of room, and you can, I, I'm not, I don't think, I, I don't know if I'm going to give anything, I don't want to give anything away, but, you know, Jamie Greco is in this, you know, the host of Cheaters, like the second host, the first guy, you, you, you'd know, the guy who got stabbed on it, apparently though, I think it was all fake, but he's in the thing, and, I mean, he was okay, I mean, what he was doing in this, but it was just kind of weird, and it really wasn't that creepy, it was all them kind of like crying and stuff, and the thing I didn't understand, though, was, like, they were supposed to be locked away in this thing, but they consistently had on, like, totally all made up with makeup and eyeliner. I'm thinking, if they were in there like this for all this time, locked away for days, they wouldn't have fresh makeup on. They'd be a mess. You know, I, I don't know. that. I know that's a stupid detail to pay attention to, but it was bothering me a little bit. I'm like, what is that about? Wipe that off. If you were in there for months and stuff, you wouldn't be all made up. I don't know. I don't know. Now, this one, I was really interested in watching. Uh, I just showed uh, my brother Phantom of the Paradise. It's one that I really love, Phantom of the Paradise. And this is a documentary on the songwriter and star of Phantom of the Paradise, Paul Williams. And, you know, he has a very interesting life. And he wrote, you know, for Barbara Streisand. He bought, wrote for The Carpenters. He wrote for The Muppet Movie. Uh, so many different things that he wrote for. And he kind of disappeared and had a problem with drugs and went out of the limelight for a while. And this is kind of... Surprisingly, it's from the director of National Lampoon's Vegas Vacation. And the guy is just a big fan of Paul Williams, and it's Paul Williams still alive. And he just kind of wanted to follow him around and get insight on his life. And it's pretty much him at first, you know, going around with Paul Williams. And at first, Paul Williams doesn't really want to open up to the camera and doesn't really want to participate too much. And it goes into finding out some really interesting things about him. And, you know, there's some stuff of him watching footage of himself, you know, you know, one of his, like, cocaine periods of time in the 80s, because Paul Williams has been clean for about 20-some years now, and, you know, him looking back on things, it was very, some very sad stuff, and just to sort of see kind of the stuff he deals with, and some of the things he goes through, but then it's interesting, you see him go to, like, the Philippines and other countries, and he's a huge star, it's like they're seeing Justin Bieber, which is very interesting, you know, and it was just all kind of different facts about him, and I don't know, I really like it, and Paul Williams, I really like his music, and he did a song on the new Daft Punk album, which was a very cool and he sounds exactly like he did in the 70s. I, he got his voice so good in that song. Now, the last ones I got from um, Redemption, from the Kino, you know, Kino's Redemption line, the first one is The Sinful Nuns of St. Valentine. And it's one of those kind of creepy nun movies. There's, always, there's been a lot of those kind of ones. And it's about, like, this girl that gets put away in a convent and the parents want her to become a nun because they don't like the guy that she's with. And the guy ends up kind of sneaking to the convent and hiding out in this secret room. And the one girl's roommate who's kind of making the moves on her and stuff ends up getting killed one night. And the nuns are blaming her for it. And she's, it's all like one of those things about them trying to get the truth from her. And... Oh, it's all those kind of things and like these real creepy nuns and creepy religious imagery and things like that. It's not a perfect one. The coolest stuff in this, to me, was the music. It has that kind of really pretty cool Italian seventies music. If you know, if you know, watch like Italian seventies movies. You know what I'm talking about. That kind of synth and hitting, just weird sounds and things like that. But this was a pretty good one. I, I thought, you know, it kind of goes downhill a little bit by the end. But I, I liked it for what it was. The next one from Redemption is The Cold Eyes of Fear. This one was okay. It's about a... Um, it's from the director of The Glorious Bastards, you know, the 70s one. And it's this guy who's with this woman. And this guy ends up coming in there and basically holding them captive. And it has to do with, like, he's the nephew of a... I think he's the nephew of a... Um, judge and it's kind of like holding him captive and all these kind of like things and the reasonings behind it and things like that i like though between the two of them i like the nun one better this one was all right not a whole ton to say about it i thought this one was just okay it was just one of those kind of things you know holding someone captive and finding things out about it and things like that
Now the final one I got from Mill Creek, it's the complete series of The Third Rock from the Sun. It's just a really, really fun show. You know, it's got Joseph Gordon-Levitt in it, it's got John Lithgow, you know, Fred Stewart, who, like, I'm finally seeing in, like, more stuff again. Because, like, for a while, I felt like he kind of disappeared and hasn't, like, done much in a long time. Like, he kind of pops up in weird stuff lately, and I think... I don't know if he's in that. There's like a Home Alone 5 or something, which I've never seen. Which I don't know if he's in that or not. But this is just a really, really fun show. But anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching the new update, and I'll see you guys later.